Radio waves are a type of electromagnetic radiation. A radio wave has a much longer wavelength than visible light. Humans use radio waves extensively for communications. The wavelengths of radio waves range from a few millimeters, tenths of inches, to hundreds of kilometers, hundreds of miles. Visible light, for comparison, has wavelengths in the 400 to 700 nanometer range, about 5,000 times shorter than the shortest wavelength radio waves. Radio waves oscillate at frequencies between a few kilohertz, kilohertz or thousands of hertz, and a few terahertz, thertz or 1,012 hertz. Far infrared radiation borders radio waves along the electromagnetic spectrum and has slightly higher energy and shorter wavelengths than radio waves. Microwaves are short wavelength radio waves which we use for cooking and for communication. Microwaves have wavelengths between a few millimeters and tens of centimeters, tenths of inches to tens of inches. Various frequencies of radio waves are used for television and FM and AM radio broadcasts, military communications, mobile phones, ham radio, wireless computer networks, and numerous other communications applications. Most radio waves pass freely through Earth's atmosphere. However, some frequencies can be reflected or absorbed by the charged particles in the ionosphere. Radio waves are a type of electromagnetic radiation with the lowest frequencies and the longest wavelengths in the electromagnetic spectrum, typically with frequencies of 300 GHz, GHz, and below. At 300 GHz, the corresponding wavelength is 1 mm, which is shorter than the diameter of a grain of rice. At 30 Hz the corresponding wavelength is 10,000 km, 6,200 miles, which is longer than the radius of the Earth. Wavelength of a radio wave is inversely proportional to its frequency, because its velocity is constant. Like all electromagnetic waves, radio waves in a vacuum travel at the speed of light, and in the Earth's atmosphere at a slightly slower speed. Radio waves are generated by charged particles undergoing acceleration, such as time-varying electric currents. Naturally occurring radio waves are emitted by lightning and astronomical objects, and are part of the black body radiation emitted by all warm objects. Radio waves are generated artificially by an electronic device called a transmitter, which is connected to an antenna which radiates the waves. They are received by another antenna connected to a radio receiver, which processes the received signal. Radio waves are very widely used in modern technology for fixed and mobile radio communication, broadcasting, radar and radio navigation systems, communication satellites, wireless computer networks and many other applications. Different frequencies of radio waves have different propagation characteristics in the Earth's atmosphere, long waves can diffract around obstacles like mountains and follow the contour of the Earth, ground waves, shorter waves can reflect off the ionosphere and return to Earth beyond the horizon, sky waves, while much shorter wavelengths bend or diffract very little and travel on a line of sight, so their propagation distances are limited to the visual horizon. To prevent interference between different users, the artificial generation and use of radio waves is strictly regulated by law, coordinated by an international body called the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, which defines radio waves as electromagnetic waves of frequencies arbitrarily lower than 3000 GHz, propagated in space without artificial guide. The radio spectrum is divided into a number of radio bands on the basis of frequency, allocated to different uses. In radio communication systems, information is transported across space using radio waves. At the sending end, the information to be sent, in the form of a time-varying electrical signal, is applied to a radio transmitter. The information, called the modulation signal, can be an audio signal representing sound from a microphone, a video signal representing moving images from a video camera, or a digital signal representing data from a computer. In the transmitter, an electronic oscillator generates an alternating current oscillating at a radio frequency, called the carrier wave because it creates the radio waves that carry the information through the air. The information signal is used to modulate the carrier, altering some aspect of it, 
encoding the information on the carrier. The modulated carrier is amplified and applied to an antenna. The oscillating current pushes the electrons in the antenna back and forth, creating oscillating electric and magnetic fields, which radiate the energy away from the antenna as radio waves. The radio waves carry the information to the receiver location. At the receiver, the oscillating electric and magnetic fields of the incoming radio wave push the electrons in the receiving antenna back and forth, creating a tiny oscillating voltage which is a weaker replica of the current in the transmitting antenna. This voltage is applied to the radio receiver, which extracts the information signal. The receiver first uses a bandpass filter to separate the desired radio station's radio signal from all the other radio signals picked up by the antenna, then amplifies the signal so it is stronger, then finally extracts the information bearing modulation signal in a demodulator. The recovered signal is sent to a loudspeaker or earphone to produce sound, or a television display screen to produce a visible image, or other devices. A digital data signal is applied to a computer or microprocessor, which interacts with a human user. The radio waves from many transmitters pass through the air simultaneously without interfering with each other. They can be separated in the receiver because each transmitter's radio waves oscillate at a different rate, in other words each transmitter has a different frequency, measured in kilohertz, kilohertz, megahertz, megahertz, or gigahertz, ghertz. The bandpass filter in the receiver consists of one or more tuned circuits which act like a resonator, similarly to a tuning fork. The tuned circuit has a natural resonant frequency at which it oscillates. The resonant frequency is set equal to the frequency of the desired radio station. The oscillating radio signal from the desired station causes the tuned circuit to oscillate in sympathy, and it passes the signal on to the rest of the receiver. Radio signals at other frequencies are blocked by the tuned circuit and not passed on. Radio wave, wave from the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum at lower frequencies than microwaves. The wavelengths of radio waves range from thousands of meters to 30 centimeters. These correspond to frequencies as low as 3 Hz and as high as 1 GHz, 109 Hz. Radio wave communication signals travel through the air in a straight line, reflect off of clouds or layers of the ionosphere, or are relayed by satellites in space. They are used in standard broadcast radio and television, shortwave radio, navigation, and air traffic control, cellular telephony, and even remote controlled toys. Most of these interactions between the patterns and the medium of the channel are best described by waves. When someone speaks, they're using pressure waves in order to convey information to somebody else. These pressure waves represent points at which molecules of air are packed closer together, and points at which they're further apart. Energy is pumped into the atmosphere to compress molecules together. The high point of the energy which squashes the molecules closer together is called the crest of the wave. The low point of the energy, when the molecules are far apart, is called the trough of the wave. The number of waves passing by in a single second that would be the frequency. Frequency is simply the number of waves passing per second. Just like the ripples on a pond after a stone has been thrown into it, all the little ripples that passed through a certain point would indicate frequency. Radio frequency is identified as number of waves per second or cycles per second. The modern term for this is hertz. The electromagnetic spectrum stretches from gamma rays down to the lowest form of radio waves. They include the following. Gamma ray. X-ray, like in a medical examination. Ultraviolet light. The optical spectrum that we can see, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Infrared light. Microwave radar. TV, FM radio. Shortwave radio. AM radio. Submarine communications. Humans are not the only users of the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. For instance, bees use ultraviolet and moths use infrared. In the radio part of the spectrum, however, humans are probably the only users. Of the human usage of the radio spectrum, the biggest users are the military. 
They use the longest wavelength radio in order to allow submarines to communicate with each other, and they also use the higher parts of the spectrum because it can penetrate buildings and communicate with people inside. It's useful when thinking about radio waves to think about light waves. Light travels in rays, and radio waves do the same thing. It is called radio propagation. When white light goes into a prism it is separated by wavelength into red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. In the same way, radio waves are going to propagate differently depending on their wavelength. Radio wavelengths are much bigger than light wavelengths. Look at propagation of radio rays traveling in order to communicate with users who are in different parts of the world, using, in radio terms, part of the VHF, very high frequency, spectrum. Radio that is in the VHF band travels in a straight line. In other words, the rays travel using line of sight. If two users on the opposite side of the world want to communicate, the radio wave cannot use line of sight propagation, because it travels in a straight line and will not go around the curve of the Earth. So, the solution for contacting somebody who's over the curved horizon is to put a satellite up, and the satellite will receive the signal from the radio caller, and then transmit it in another straight line, line of sight, to the person receiving it at the other end. UHF, ultra-high frequency, which, for example, would be 400 MHz, operates in exactly the same way. In longer wavelengths of radio, however, the propagation is different. For example, in lower short wave, which is around 300 kHz to 3 MHz, the radio propagation or radio wave can actually curve itself around the horizon or the curvature of the Earth. In higher short wave, which is what people in the 40s and 50s used to listen to when they wanted to hear international broadcasts, the properties are different again. The radio propagation is going to do an interesting exercise. First it bounces off a top layer of the atmosphere called the ionosphere, then it bounces back to the earth, this is reflection. It then bounces up again to the ionosphere, and continues bouncing back again until it reaches the radio receiver. This is called a sky wave, which works around 3 to 30 megahertz. Radio propagation, like other radio properties, can depend critically on radio wavelength. Since radio frequency radiation has both an electric and a magnetic component, it is often convenient to express intensity of radiation field in terms of units specific to each component. The unit volts per meter, V slash M, is used for the electric component, and the unit amperes per meter, A slash M, is used for the magnetic component. One can speak of an electromagnetic field, and these units are used to provide information about the levels of electric and magnetic field strength at a measurement location. Another commonly used unit for characterizing an RF electromagnetic field is power density. Power density is most accurately used when the point of measurement is far enough away from the RF emitter to be located in what is referred to as the far field zone of the radiation pattern. In closer proximity to the transmitter, i.e., in the near field zone, the physical relationships between the electric and magnetic components of the field can be complex, and it is best to use the field strength units discussed above. Power density is measured in terms of power per unit area, for example, milliwatts per square centimeter, MW slash CM2. When speaking of frequencies in the microwave range and higher, Power density is usually used to express intensity since exposures that might occur would likely be in the far field zone. Thank you for watching this video.